Welcome back lore lovers to another deep dive into the rich tapestry of Warhammer 40k. Today we unravel the compelling saga of Inquisitor Gregor Eisenhorn, a figure whose journey to the grim darkness of the 41st millennium has left an inedible mark on the Imperium. Even the King of the Nerds himself, Henry Cavill, has expressed keen interest in portraying the iconic character of Inquisitor Eisenhorn in a potential series set in this universe. He'd make a very good Gregor Eisenhorn, I think. That, I mean, that would be exciting, yes, but then I'd burn Primarchs. And, and the Captain General, so I just don't, I don't really know, I don't really know. From his early days as a determined Puritan Inquisitor, to the shadow of doubt and radicalism that crept into his path, Eisenhorn's story is a testament to the complexities of loyalty, power and the relentless battle against the forces of chaos. Gregor Eisenhorn is an Inquisitor of the Ordo Xenos. At the beginning of his career, he adhered strictly to the Puritan principles of the Amalatian faction. However, over time, his inquisitorial ideology shifted dramatically towards the philosophy of radical Zentism. This shift was so profound that other members of the Inquisition began to see him as a potential heretic. In fact, Eisenhorn has been officially labeled as a traitor by the Inquisition on at least two occasions. Despite these accusations, he managed to prove himself a righteous servant of the Emperor of Mankind each time. Join me, Lion Drag, as we explore the highs, the lows, and the ultimate legacy of Gregor Eisenhorn. Born in 198 Millennium 41st on Dikiri's world, Gregor Eisenhorn's life took a dramatic turn when he was taken by the black ships at an early age. Over time, he became an acolyte of Inquisitor Hapshant, studying alongside fellow Britons Titus Endor. Eisenhorn's talents and dedication were evident, and he was elevated to the rank of full Inquisitor in 222 Millennium 41st at the remarkably young age of 24. His first major success came with the persecution of the heretic Lemete Sire. Eisenhorn's career was marked by stability and competence, but everything began to change in 240 Millennium 41st. During this pivotal year, he successfully ended the reign of terror wrought by the mass murderer Mordin Iclone. This investigation was significant not only because it brought Godwin Fishing and Elizabeth Bequeen into his service as acolytes, but also because it set him on a path to pursue both Pontius Glow and the elusive Necrotuch. Following leads from the Iclone investigation, Gregor Eisenhorn found himself entangled with a heretical cabal on the world of Gudrun. His involvement with this cabal led to a dangerous encounter where he was briefly captured and tortured by one of its members, Gorgon Locke. The cabal was eventually dismantled through a full inquisitorial purge led by Inquisitor Vogue. During this purge, Eisenhorn managed to recover a device known as the Pontius from the cabal. This device turned out to be of great significance, as it held the encoded brain engrams of the notorious and long dead heretic Pontius Glow. One of the Cabal's plans had involved a raging Glow's resurrection. Eisenhorn kept Pontius Glow captive, subjecting him to regular interrogations. Ultimately, Eisenhorn decided to have the Pontius device incarcerated by Magus Bur on the Adeptus Mechanicus, a choice that would profoundly impact his future. Pursuing further leads from the Cabal Purge, Gregor Eisenhorn embarked on one of his most renowned investigations, the Affair of the Necro Tuch, a tome of chaos knowledge. He tracked the remnants of the heretical Gudrun Cabal to a colony world inhabited by Xenos Saruti. The Saruti had obtained a copy of the Necro Tuch and had translated it into their own language, resulting in two versions of the Chaos Tome and the translating tool. Eisenhorn quickly located and destroyed the human Necro Tuch written in High Gothic. This act was controversial. Some radical inquisitors considered it heretical and condemned Eisenhorn. However, the majority of the local inquisitorial conclave, which was dominated by Puritans, supported his decision to burn the tome, outvoting the radicals. As a result, Eisenhorn was spared from censure and played a key role in planning a raid on the Saruti homeworld, where the remaining tainted items were destroyed. During this attack, Eisenhorn encountered Sherubael for the first time, a powerful demon host who would go on to hunt Eisenhorn and the Imperium in future endeavors. In the year 241 Millennium 41st, Gregor Eisenhorn found himself investigating a series of ritual murders on the world of Sameter. 
Initially, he suspected these killings to be the work of a chaos cult. However, he soon uncovered that the perpetrators were actually former soldiers of the Asta Militarum. These ex-soldiers of the Sameter 9th Infantry Regiment had been driven mad by the horrors they had witnessed in war and had turned to ritually killing ordinary citizens, with the support of the local Adeptus Arbites Arbitrators. Eisenhorn cornered and eliminated the fanatics in an abandoned, decaying building. During the ensuing firefight, Eisenhorn lost his left hand to a skilled former sharpshooter. Although offered a bionic prosthetic, he declined and managed with a fused stump until he could have a vet grown hand grafted on two years later. In 312 Millennium 41st, tragedy struck when Eisenhorn's best friend and acolyte, Midas Bittencore, was killed by the heretic Fady Turing during an investigation. Turing escaped and Eisenhorn vowed to keep a watchful eye on Midas' infant daughter, Medea. Years later, when she came of age, Medea followed in her father's footsteps and joined Eisenhorn's retinue as his pilot. Fast forward 26 Terran years to 338 Millennium 41st and Eisenhorn began the investigation that would cement his fame across the Imperium, the elimination of the heretic Inquisitor Quixos. This investigation unfolded in the aftermath of the disaster of the Thracian Primaris Triumph, where Eisenhorn's interrogator, Gideon Ravenor, was grievously injured. The atrocity appeared to have been orchestrated to free several Alpha Plus crash rogue psychers from Imperial detention, setting the stage for one of Eisenhorn's most pivotal missions. Eisenhorn's investigation led him to the world of Ichon, where he and his team, disguised as mutants, uncovered a disturbing revelation. There was inquisitorial collusion in the scheme that had freed the rogue psychers. This was evidenced by the presence of Inquisitor Liko, who was found in the company of the demon host Sherubail. The reappearance of Sherubail shifted Eisenhorn's focus onto the creature, which guided him to the fortress world of Cadia. There he encountered another demon host, Profanity, and discovered connections between these demon hosts and the missing radical Inquisitor Quixos. However, Eisenhorn's progress was abruptly halted when he was arrested by Inquisitor Osma on charges of allegedly consorting with demons. After managing to escape, he was declared an outcast by the Inquisition, forcing him to continue his investigation as a rogue. Eisenhorn sought refuge with his Adeptus Mechanicus ally, Magos Bure, on the world of Sincher. During this time, he consulted with his prisoner, Pontius Glow, and managed to dismantle a chaos cult on the planet, acquiring mastercrafted force weapons in the process. Determined to bring Quixos to justice, Eisenhorn assembled a small strike team consisting of three other Inquisitors. Together, they tracked down and confronted the renegade Inquisitor Quixos. In the climactic encounter, Eisenhorn personally killed Quixos, seized his heretical book, the Malus Codicium, and banished both Profanity and Sherubail to the world. At the conclusion of the investigation, Eisenhorn was exonerated of all charges. In 345 Millennium 41st, Eisenhorn successfully summoned the demon Sherubail in secret, trapping him in the physical universe for interrogation and study. Ten years later, in 355 Millennium 41st, he dealt with a minor warp incursion of demons on Gudrun, showcasing his continued vigilance and commitment to his duties. In 386 Millennium 41st, Gregor Eisenhorn finally avenged the death of his friend and acolyte, Midas Bittencore, by killing the heretic Fady Turing. However, this victory came at a tremendous cost. The battle claimed the lives of several of Eisenhorn's associates, left Bequeen in a coma, destroyed his personal starship and gun cutter, and forced him to ally with the demon Sherubail. To control Sherubail, Eisenhorn resorted to sacrificing the naive Puritan Inquisitor Bastian Verwug in an impromptu chaos ritual, marking a significant step on his path to domination. Shortly after these events, Eisenhorn was targeted in a meticulously planned attack by Pontius Glow, who had escaped inquisitorial captivity and sought revenge. Eisenhorn's life was shattered, his career was ruined, he was once again declared an outcast by Inquisitor Osma and Heldane, his body was broken and much of his retinue was killed. Despite the dire circumstances, Eisenhorn managed to call upon his former pupil, Gideon Ravenor, now a full Inquisitor. With Ravenor's help, Eisenhorn tracked down and finally eliminated Pontius Glow. However, the ordeal profoundly impacted him, breaking down his resistance to using radical methods in his fight against Chaos and the Imperium's enemies. 
Consequently, he began traveling with Sherubael as his constant companion. Following the Pontius affair, Eisenhorn largely vanished from the public eye, despite his outcast status being rescinded once more by the Inquisition. He reappeared only briefly over the years to recruit new acolytes or confer with former associates. Notably, he warned Gideon Ravenor about the intentions of the Chaos Cult known as the Divine Fratery. Later members of the cult speculated that Eisenhorn might have died fighting their followers as he was inside the building they bombed and subsequently vanished from their psychic foresight. The truth of Eisenhorn's fate remains uncertain, leaving his death open to dispute. And there you have it, lore lovers, the epic tale of Inquisitor Eisenhorn, a narrative steeped in tragedy, sacrifice and the unyielding pursuit of justice. If you enjoyed this journey through the Warhammer 40k universe, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Lion Drag for more immersive lore explorations. Join our Discord community for engaging discussions on all things Warhammer and beyond. Until next time, may the Emperor protect you and the light of knowledge guide your way in the darkness of the 41st millennium. See you soon.